If you're looking for a quintessentially English country town that's just an hour from London, you'll find it in Winchester. Here are some of the things that we enjoyed in this cathedral city that was once the ancient capital of England. Winchester Cathedral is one of the main things to see here and today there's a farmer's market so we've been buying our picnic lunch, steak pie, blueberry cake and strawberry liqueur. The farmer's market is held once a week in the cathedral close but you can find other markets on most weekends and it's a great way to taste some of Hampshire's delicious local foods. Winchester Cathedral is at the heart of the city. You can attend a service, take one of the free guided tours, or just explore the beauty of the cathedral at your own pace. Medieval pilgrims flock to the shrine of St. Swithin, and in the crypt you'll find the Anthony Gormley sculpture, up to its knees in water when the crypt floods. Around the cathedral close, there are several green spaces and quiet gardens to enjoy. Just behind the cathedral are the ruins of the old bishop's palace, Wolsey Castle, which is free to enter. Continue your walk along the river to Winchester City Mill, which is run by the National Trust. There's been a mill on this site for centuries, supplying the city with flour. It's a great stop for families, and at weekends you can see the grain being fed in at the top and being ground into flour by the millstones of water wheel down below. You can buy a bag of flour to make your bread at home and if you're lucky you might spot the otters that live on this stretch of the river itching. Just opposite the mill are the Abbey Gardens which are great for a picnic and there's a children's playground. The Great Hall is all that remains of the medieval Winchester Castle and the King Arthur's table that hangs at one end dates back to the 14th century is painted with the Tudor rose and the names of the Knights of the Round Table. The tall wrought steel gates at one end of the hall were created for the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana. A little up the hill, the Peninsula Barracks, which were built to replace the King's House, a palace of Charles II that burnt down. The historic buildings now house several military museums. Just by the cathedral close, we enjoyed our dinner at the Old Vine. It's a traditional inn with oak beams, real ale and delicious food. The bread and butter pudding has quite a reputation. We can also recommend the Winchester Hotel where we stayed. It's an easy walk to the historic centre. Our room was perfectly comfortable and we loved the colourful modern style of the bar and restaurant. The writer Jane Austen spent her last days in this house in Winchester and is buried in the cathedral. The house is privately owned, but you can discover more about Jane Austen's life at the house at Chawton where she lived with her mother and sister Cassandra, which is open as a museum. The South Downs Way runs for a hundred miles from the cliffs of Eastbourne to Winchester, taking in chalk uplands and beautiful countryside. We're on the South Downs Way. It would take you about a week to do the whole thing, but we haven't got that long, so we're just doing the bit from Beacon Hill back towards Winchester. Walk it in the early summer and you'll see sheets of yellow rapeseed in the field and lacy cow parsley by the paths. Near Winchester you'll also find the historic country house and gardens of Hinton Ampner which are open throughout the year. Nampner is a country house just outside Winchester. It's owned by the National Trust and it's known for its beautiful gardens of Kiptopiri. The house was remodelled in classical Georgian style by the last Lord Sherborne after a devastating fire in the 1960s and there are many different gardens and terraces surrounding the house which overlooks the beautiful Hampshire countryside. With so much history and natural beauty, Winchester seems to capture in a small area the very best of England. Enjoy your weekend.